Welcome back to Blahdev, everyone. Today we're going to be going over debugging in Flutter and how you can easily debug your code and figure out what's going wrong with it. Let's get into it. So this is the application that we're going to be using today to do our debugging and testing. If you've been to the channel before, you'll recognize it from Flutterfire 101 Firestore. Um, we used it to do basic CRUD operations with Firebase. So we're going to use this as our guinea pig. So to start off, the most basic thing that you can do to debug in your application is we can have print statements. So you'll see here when I click the create button, it prints out button pressed. And this is the most basic form of debugging that Flutter gives us. And it's what comes in the default um, simple incremental button app that it builds. What we're going to do to expand beyond just print statements today is we're going to say import developer into our file where we want to do our detailed debugging. And we're going to say as developer. And then what we can do is in our method, we can say developer.log and we can call this, uh, we'll just say default log and we'll say name is going to be creating a user. And we can also put more things in here such as an error. Um, I think there's level um, and that would determine the severity and what color it would rep be represented as and so on. But what we can do with this is if we click create, you'll see here we have this default log and then in parentheses it says, or brackets, it says creating a user. But we can actually see a more detailed log of everything going on if we go into Dart tools. And so to do this, we'll open up our command prompt in VS Code. And if you're in Android Studio, in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a button. And on that button, you'll have access to Dart DevTools. And so go ahead and do that. Click Open DevTools, and we have a bunch of different options of which pages we want to open and work with. But what we want to use is the web browser version because it has all of these all in one location. So we're going to click Open Browser. Okay, and that'll pull it up right here for us. And you'll see this default screen is our Flutter Inspector. If you're familiar with the Flutter Inspector, it basically shows you the layout of your app, um, where is your widget tree, how are things nested, and so on. What we're interested in though is going to be our logging page because what this is going to do is every single time we execute something, so we clicked create in this, in this case, it shows us all of the frame builds and whatnot, but it also shows us all of our detailed logs. And when we click on the log, we're going to get some details as to what's going on with that log down here. There is a couple other tabs that are useful to us, such as performance. We can click record, we can create, can read, we can do all these things. I'm sorry, I have a breakpoint here. I'm just gonna click play. But what's gonna happen is when we click stop, we're gonna be able to see the performance and how it was doing, and we can analyze it a little bit more, and we can get some details into how it's performing and what's holding it up and what's going wrong. Um, we can see memory, how the app is doing over time in regards to memory. Um, we have a couple other different tabs that are useful to us, such as network. But the, the key ones that are of interest to us are the Flutter Inspector, if you want to see the formatting of your code and how things are nested, the Logging tab, which we just talked about, which allows us to, let's say I click that several times. If we scroll down here, you'll see that that wasn't it. It was this one, creating a user, creating a user, creating a user. Yeah, it was those three. But the Logging tab is of interest to us and the Debugger tab is of interest to us. And the reason the debugger tab is of interest to us is let's go ahead and look at this code here. I've set a breakpoint. And so to set a breakpoint, you just click on the line next to it um, and it's going to set a breakpoint. And when you're in debug mode, what will happen is when we hit that line in the code, it'll stop everything and let us analyze what's going on at that line. So if I pull open the debug panel on the left hand side here, and in Android Studio, it's in the bottom, there's a debug tab, and you want to look at that debug tab to see similar information. But what I can do here is I can step through. So I stepped over, and it now shows me any value that's already been set. So I have this variable x, and I can see what it represents. And this is helpful because let's say I have a, an issue going on at line 19. It's breaking, and I don't know why. I can go ahead and get to that line. And before it executes, I can analyze, okay, what's, what variables are utilized on this line? And I can analyze them in the sidebar and I can see, okay, are they the values I'm expecting them to be? And what might potentially be breaking it? 
And likewise, if we go to DevTools, and typically what you want to do is you want to have DevTools open in another window if you have the space on a monitor or something. Um, but we can see the same information and some, um, such as the call stack as well. We have our breakpoints listed out. Um, we have our console present as well. We have all this information present for us, and we can also step in, step over, resume, do all these different things as well from DevTools. So it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, it's very useful for debugging, um, and it's definitely something that you wanna be utilizing at all times when you're working on your code. The last thing that I wanna go over is the Problems tab. So the Problems tab is down here in our term, down here with our terminal. Um, we have our output, terminal, debug console, and problems. And what problems is gonna tell us to do is it's gonna tell us some linting things. So for instance, in this case, uh, we have two variables that don't get used, and so they should be removed if we're, if we're not going to use them, and it tells us that. Likewise, if we are to say something like this, like let's say we try to insert Z into this list, it'll recognize that that's incorrect and that's an issue, and it's going to alert us here in our problems tab. So it's a good habit to always keep your eye on the problems tab, and if you see a number on the problems tab, it's a good idea to check it out and verify that it's actually something of importance. Sometimes you'll get logs and simply in the moment, you don't have time to remove an unused variable. But it's very good practice to look at it, clean up what you can, and remove anything that's unused. So that's the last thing that I do wanna point out and that is a good idea to use when you are debugging and working on your code is that problems tab. That's it for today, guys. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, make sure you click that like button, subscribe to the channel for weekly Flutter content, and I'll catch you guys next time.